Capricorn, this is your week ahead astrology forecast by Astrology Motivation. In these weekly videos, I review the major planetary aspects and transits, and I let you know how they're aspecting your natal sun. And I translate that into how it's going to impact just your bottom line. All you need to know to understand these videos is your birth date. That's it. Everything else I will translate for you. Uh, so we're going to start off really broad with the big stuff, with the charts for the week. And then we're going to get into um, Capricorn specific information. And then I'll break everything down into the three decans of Capricorn. A decan is a group of 10 degrees. And by doing that, I'll be able to understand exactly how your natal suns, based on your birth date, how your natal suns are going to be impacted by all this energy that we've just discussed. So this is for the week of September 13th through the 19th of 2023. And we do have some pretty profound things happening in the sky. They're a little bit quieter. They're sort of the feminine loud, which is soft loud. Um, but they're impactful. We have a grand earth trine all week long. That's happening between Pluto, Uranus, and the sun. So Pluto and Uranus have been trying, and they will be trying for quite some time. But the fact that the sun is in Virgo, we know this because it's Virgo season, is now in the third decan or enters the third decan this week of Virgo, that positions it in a grand trine position. So the sun all week long will be trying to Pluto and Uranus, which are already trying to each other, forming a grand trine. Grand trines are easements. They kind of make things less harsh, harmonious, easier. They are also associated with laziness or slacking off. But when it comes to earth, that's the hardest thing to make easier because it's the most solid. It's the most three-dimensional of all the three-dimensionals, of all the elements. It is the most reality-based. So this easement, when it comes to earth energy and the fact that it's including Pluto and Uranus, which are innovative energies, game changer energies, permanent innovations that create permanent change. That's Pluto trine Uranus. Innovations that create permanent change, that change things for good. Now that we have the sun thrown in there, innovations that change things for good, that change the individual for good, that change the man or the woman for good an easement of all these tensions to finally allow us to innovate in ways that maybe before we weren't allowed. Now, while all this is happening, the sun is also in opposition to Neptune. And you got to take that into consideration because Neptune is sextile to Pluto and sextile to Uranus. And now it's opposite the sun. What the heck does that mean? Well, if it's just Neptune opposite the sun... It's distractions. It's almost like self-delusion. Delusions, not delusions of grandeur. That's more the sun opposite Jupiter. But an unclear vision of who the heck I am. Easily being distracted from what is my purpose and what's important to me. And being made vulnerable to the point of, I may believe things about myself or about how people treat me. It's really easy to play on somebody's ego when Neptune is in opposition to the sun. Because this is when it is most slack. It's when it's weakest. It's when how you view yourself is, is at its most fantastical. So what does that mean when it's part of a grand trine that creates innovation of the person? Now, it could create opportunity where people are now not so judgmental or like the, the criteria aren't so predictable and they'll be more open to the oddball or the oddity or the person that may not have gotten through any other way because they see them more optimistically than they normally would have. So that's op that could be opportunity for a lot of people who 
felt stuck in the system, whatever system they were in. Felt like they were being blocked in or restricted. But it can also mean being able to really bamboozle somebody and take advantage. And to see maybe that being exposed this week. We do, after all, have Mercury coming out of retrograde. It is going direct on the 15th, which is the day right after the new moon. So the new moon happens on the 14th, which means that the moon is also going to be in opposition to Neptune. And that's real, real, real delusion. But it's also real, real, real possibility. Let's say this, both good and bad things will get passed through over the next couple of days because people are more open to things that are different and they don't want to stand still. They want change. But of course, that change can come in the form of a devil with a blue dress on, of something that's disguised as helpful when it's really not but it'll be really easy to pass. So for all of you who are really into politics, I would watch the kinds of bills that are passing right now in your country or government because you could, you could easily slip some slimy stuff through at this time. But for those of you who have needed an, a window of opportunity, and remember, that's ultimately what new moons are, newness. What is this new? a new self, a new way of looking at yourself. I've also taken it to mean in some ways, how have you been delusional about yourself? How have you limited yourself and how can you be easier on yourself and think, you know what, what I do, I'm better at it than I give myself credit for, or it has more applications than I give myself credit for. How have my delusions about who I am or what I'm restricted by limited me and now that there's an easement of that there could be clarity especially in terms of capability because we've got all earth energy here neptune all week long is opposite the sun but that's okay because all week long the sun is also in this grand trine with pluto and uranus and mercury is in opposition to saturn through the 17th of this week now that means, for the most part, that there seems to be suppressed speech or lack of authority or lack of conviction or somebody doesn't want to hear what, what, what you have to say or feeling like you don't have the right words, especially before Mercury goes direct. But it'll still be shadow period. It'll still be trying to get its momentum back. It's basically stationary all week long. It's only at eight degrees Virgo. But ultimately, that's also a sense of breaking free from the restrictions. Because by the end of this week, the opposition between Mercury and Saturn will be broken. Mercury will be able to move on from Saturn's restrictions. This means communications, information, thought process will start to go back online. So it's really interesting to see maybe there's a trap being set for those individuals who would take advantage of others and then we can see it and it can expose itself and once mercury goes direct we can do something about it so venus is also very optimistic i've got to say venus is presenting us with a square to jupiter a trine to chiron and a sextile to mars this is taking action on what makes you happy what gives you pleasure but based on what you've learned by hard lessons because that's where that the empowerment of a trying to chiron comes from this sense of the choices that i'm making what i'm attracted to now what's turned me on now what i really desire now is informed by a lot of challenges that have gone on in my life so it really is about the comeuppance of how do i move on from learning my lessons the hard way and how have I changed? How has the individual changed? How have I changed how I see myself and what I desire based on the crap that I survived? And I like that energy because it's productive, it's innovative, but it's also realistic and responsible. And I like that energy. 
So let's get into Capricorn specific information, shall we? Saturn, what is going on? Saturn is your ruling dignitary. So I look at two things. I look at what's going on in Capricorn, the zodiac sign, makes sense, right? And then I look at what's going on with Saturn. So what's going on in Capricorn? Pluto. Pluto is still at 28 degrees Capricorn, and I think it will retrograde back to about 27 degrees. But Capricorn right now is still being visited by Pluto, and it will be into next year. Oh, no, no, maybe I'm wrong about that. I'm not sure about that. But still there, a couple of months. What's going on with Saturn? Saturn is still in Pisces at 2 degrees. It's not going to shift because it's actually going to, it's actually slowing down its retrograde now. I don't think it's, it's not coming out of retrograde right now, but it's going to be coming out of retrograde relatively soon. So we're going to see it's not retrograding as much as it was. It is in opposition to Mercury through the 17th. And it's grand, there's a grand square, there's a, I'm sorry, a, a semi-square between Saturn and Chiron. Semi-square between Saturn and Chiron makes everything more difficult, everything more challenging, and everything more personal. But by everything, I mean the restrictions and the hardships. It makes it more personal. <laughs> um, the opposition to Mercury makes it less possible to communicate, right? A real sense of, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. Or I feel like there's no hope, like I can't do anything. My hands are tied. And then we have, by the end of the week, by the 18th, a Cesar square or Cesar quick quadrate to Mars. Now that is not a major aspect. It is a minor aspect. But because it's Saturn and Mars, two malefics, it can cause a great deal of friction and a great deal of hardship and irritation, stress, maybe even igniting some kind of battle or confrontation. Just an FYI. Um, but for this week, there is really almost a revolutionary, revolutionizing the self, revolutionizing the person. And on this new moon, on the 14th in Virgo, what do you want to cultivate about you for the next year? Or at least the next six months till we arrive back in Pisces season at the Virgo full moon. What do we want to revolutionize about who we are based on and in opposition to the lies we've told ourselves or the way the world's viewed us that don't really reflect our authenticity because that trying to Uranus is going to make us want to be reflected authentically and not what other people have thrown at us so let's get into the decans if you know that your natal sun is between zero and nine degrees Capricorn, it's in the first decan of Capricorn, and you guys are Capricorn ones. This correlates to Capricorn birthdays, and the birthdays are always an estimate, guys. So the most accurate way is to check your natal chart, and it's free and easy to get them once you have three things. Your birth date, which you already have, your birth time, and your birth location. You need that to get a full natal chart. So once you've compiled that information, you can go to a number of websites, plug in that info, and it'll spit it out in a couple of seconds. Um, so Capricorn ones are generally speaking December Capricorns. If your birthday is between December 22nd and the 31st of December, you guys are Capricorn ones. Yes, Christmas and New Year's babies, I hear you. Your natal suns are sextile to Saturn, which is phenomenal because it means progress and you're taking yourself seriously and other people are taking you seriously. And that could really be effective for career building. And that's all year. So you've got the time and you've got the assistance all year. But it's also this week trying to Mercury, which means that whatever's going on to Mercury, there's an easement when it comes to your brain, what you think and how you're able to speak. There's an eloquence and an ease with which you can communicate your ideas. This is a phenomenal time to give interviews, take tests, make presentations, however you want to present, uh, especially if it's in written form or it's in spoken form. Now, Mercury is just coming out of retrograde on the 15th, so I still wouldn't suggest signing any real binding paperwork 
for the next couple of weeks, like major contracts, etc., etc. I still would not do that. I wouldn't do that to the end of September, beginning of October. Like mortgages and things that, you know, your ass will be on the line if you sign them to. But, you know, because especially with that sun opposite Neptune, you could be tricked into taking things a little bit too easy or not being taking things too seriously or not seriously enough. And that easement where it can create opportunity could also create a bigger field for distraction. But when you want to present and you want to communicate, this is a really beautiful time for you. Just letting you know. Now, if you are Capricorn 2s, your natal sun is somewhere between 10 and 19 degrees Capricorn. This usually correlates to birthdays between January 1st and January 11th. Your natal suns, and this is why you got to kind of know where your natal sun is located because I tell you, horoscopes just don't do it. You're not all being impacted the same way. Your natal suns are semi-square to Saturn, which means there's friction with your career. Or if not friction, whatever's happening is putting a spur in your side to make you take action and change things. But it's going to become, but it's through like friction, it's through irritation. So even though the end result may be progress, it's a little bit more difficult for you guys. Your natal suns are also square to Chiron and that's a long-term square. That ain't going nowhere for a while. So that's also a feeling of why is everything so difficult for me? Why is it so hard? Because of the semi-square to Saturn and the square to Chiron. It makes you take things a lot more personally than they actually are. And being becoming discouraged and maybe in some ways even depressed is more likely with situations like this. So doing for the next year, anything like getting a self-care routine to remind yourself of your own value and to look at your challenges as, as lessons is really, really, really suggested. Now, we also have some friction when it comes to this quincunx to Venus which means that there's something going on, either your finances or your romantic partnerships or both, just in terms of feeling valued and how what you personally value. That's really become frustrated and really, really irritating you. But it could also be the spur in your side that kicks you into gear to changing, making the changes that you need to make. Um, that's over the next week or so because Venus is about, I think, 14 degrees Leo now she's just started to move direct so she won't be she won't be in that position for much longer but she's there now and then we have listen to this this is what I love a trine to Jupiter so in all this frustration for some reason this is going to give you that mindset of no matter how tough it is I'm learning from this it's going to give you the ability to see all of this as a lesson and a challenge, an obstacle course and personal training and not as so much of a discouragement. It is going to give you that optimism over the next month or so. And that's going to help out so much, like beyond so much that it'll make all of this almost like um, blessings in disguise. <clears throat> then we have Mars. So the square to Mars will move out in the next couple of weeks but still that's tension and friction and anger so especially around your romantic relationships your sexual desires there could be a lot of challenges here right now and butting heads because sun square mars makes you angrier and makes you more pop offish so it's really important to give yourself that self-care and to give yourself time and count to 10 before you leap down somebody's throat because the agitation is running real high this week. Capricorn 3. If you know that your natal sun is between 20 and 29 degrees Capricorn, you are Capricorn 3s. This correlates to birthdays between the 12th and the 22nd of January. 
you're the ones that are, are conjunct Pluto. And you know this because it's been this way for a long time and it will continue to be. Even when Pluto goes into the first couple of degrees of Aquarius, those of you at the Capricorn cusp, which is kind of like the 21st, 22nd, 23rd of January, you guys are going to be conjunct to Pluto for a while. So ultimately, yes, conjunction to Pluto is you just have a formidable energy about you. People ain't going to mess with you. And you might bring the change into the room. There's a sextile to Neptune, which means you're creative. There's a trine to Uranus between Uranus and your natal suns. So you're innovative and independent and individualistic. And there's a trine to the current sun. Remember, you're all ground zero, a part of this. There's also a trine to the new moon. This easement will really help you out and help you reimagine who you are and give yourself space to start making that happen. This is a beautiful new moon for you. Please, please, please manifest as much as you can. You're also square to the nodes for the next couple of months. So your life is supposed to change. You're supposed to turn a corner with how you see yourself, how you see yourself applying your skill set, and what you want to be around. Your tastes are changing. So you let me know, Capricorns, what's going on in your life, how you're experiencing this energy. It'd be interesting conversation. If you love this video, please like it and then share it with people you know would also get a lot from it too. Don't forget to subscribe to Astrology Motivation to help us grow over here. And then come on over to Born Without Boundaries Tarot for your week ahead tarot card reading. I love you guys. Talk to you in the videos. Bye.